Hello everyone, and welcome to this episode of the NASDAQ Spotlight. I'm your host, Jack Castle, and joining us today is the founder and CEO of Magic, Eric Steinberger. Eric, thanks so much for coming on the show. Hey Jack, thanks so much for having me. So for the audience and those tuning in, why don't we start with uh, you giving us a description of Magic and, and the problem you're solving for your customers. You know, I, I think AI is going to be the largest technological revolution we've seen in human history and probably beyond. And uh, within Magic, we're trying to make sure that that goes well. Um, we chose software engineering as the primary uh, route and, and, and avenue of manifesting that. Um, concretely on the product front, our goal is to automate software engineering entirely. Um, there are many milestones in between, like you know, software engineering assistance for developers and then eventually becoming more and more autonomous. But ultimately our goal is to help make software engineering um, you know, as easy as describing what you want. Uh, that's very interesting, Eric. And maybe double clicking on that, why an AI assistant for engineers? What did you see in the market that interests you most there? I think there's a massive need for that as a developer shortage. It's a massive, massive market. I, you know, in terms of how much of the um, new and interesting development over the past decades has come out of software, you know, like a lot. <laughs> We're talking through software right now. So if we can do that faster and better, I think that's 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 very useful um, broadly for the world. But beyond that, I think software is uh, the natural environment and and form of communication for AI. And if we're going to train um, you know, more general AI systems, the natural way for them to express themselves and the natural way for them to learn is within software. Uh, and, and so it, it felt like it felt very natural for both sides of the company where, you know, the side where we just care about making sure that, you know, safe AGI is, is uh, or AGI is developed safely and, and, um, and responsibly. And at the same time, um, it's a very useful product to build. I think we've just very clearly heard that from customers that they, they would appreciate being faster at writing code. Very much so. And um, how do you think AI assistance will change the way we interact and, and really work in the future? You know, I think we've seen this a few times in the past. There's, you know, manual work that we've done on fields that, you know, now we just go over with a massive machine and we do like 400 times as much and, you know, 1% of the time uh, with barely any people. I think there's a straight line kind of, or not really a straight line, a very non-straight line, but there is a line to some extent. Um, between current levels of productivity and kind of the next stage where AI is like more more useful as an assistant, but you still have to check everything. And then eventually there is this um, massive line upwards um, of, oh, wait, AI can just do this for me and run 24 seven on a thousand GPUs. Uh, I think there's, there's going to be slow change and slow adoption for a short while. And then eventually you're going to realize that you can trust not today's systems, but future systems um, with tasks uh, as much as I would trust our senior engineering team, you know, to, you know, they review each other's work. I don't look at their code. They, they do that among themselves and it just works from my perspective. And, and similarly, I think we're going to get to systems um, of AI systems that are able to do that just as reliably and more reliably. And, and at that point, I think we see productivity jumps that are just, you know, not very easy to quantify anymore. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective on this. And, you know, this year you're one of several AI focused entrants on the Enterprise Tech 30 list. Uh, what does that mean for you? You know, I've been wanting to do um, AGI since I was 15. Um, this is just a straight uh, kind of continuation, a very natural continuation of a path I've taken so far. I've spent a few years in research. Um, and, and worked on a few interesting, uh, different interesting problems. And we've now gotten to a point with the technology where it's so good and so useful that you can deploy it into useful products. Um, you also need a hell lot of money to scale the systems to the level where they become um, your performant and, and uh, you know, kind of at the cutting edge of usefulness. Uh, and so that just, it seemed very natural for that to be done within the, the context of a company and a startup. Uh, again, it's very useful for customers uh, to have, uh, you know, to have, like, significantly reduce their development times and, and efforts. Uh, I think it's going to massively improve accessibility of, of software if you're a young startup and you can't afford 10 of the brightest engineers. Well, you know, what if you just had a system that could help you do it at, at a fraction at a fraction of the time and a fraction of the cost? Uh, so, you know, what it means a lot to me to get a chance to be part of that. I think this is the biggest thing that has happened in the history of humanity. And I, I sincerely mean this. I think that, that you know, this is bigger than... Uh, is steam engine, this is bigger than electricity, this is bigger than the internet, we're going to automate doing stuff. And, you know, what comes after that is, you know, economically, this is going to be a very interesting time. Uh, you're going to have like infinite stuff 
um, hopefully sustainably for everyone. And you know, one question I like to always end with is uh, as a founder for the other founders, entrepreneurs out there watching today, what's some advice you'd have for them, especially given today's climate? Just uh, do stuff like, don't you don't need to fundraise to do uh, like the, usually you don't need to fundraise to do to do the like initial hard problem the work on the, the initially hard problem that you're trying to tackle at least I can only speak from my own experiences right I've always tried to um, take on very important and very hard problems that sort of intersection just seem attractive and if if you're starting a company that's that's more um, centered around you know, kind of a, a business um, opportunity where you kind of bring together a few things that that just make sense business wise but aren't very difficult from a technological perspective. I'm probably not the best person to give you advice um, on the tech side. If you're just trying to solve a really hard problem, um, just you know make good progress solving it, and then eventually you know you'll attract the right talent, you'll uh, attract the funding you need. Um, things just speak for themselves at some point and uh, you, you just got to iterate on the, you know, sort of say what you're going to do and and then do it uh, piece and then everything else sort of comes together. Uh, I think the thing that has never worked for me is to try to do like proactive sales um, of any sort. I, I really just like sort of doing stuff and uh, I, yeah, so I'd say the biggest illusion that I, I think many others have or had, I did no longer have it, is that there's some sort of barrier. Um, you know, I'm I, one VC um, when we raised our like first funding round, obviously we raised a lot of money now, but the first like little, you know, a few million um, around uh, one VC is like, hey, so why should we fund some random dudes from Austria um, with, with this? Uh, you know, I was like, okay, um, fine. Um, and, you know, like five months later, we had 28 million. We were trying to raise five at that point um, in funding to you know, build the thing we wanted to build. Uh, you wouldn't, I think it's very easy to get discouraged by stuff like that. And, and I have, you know, there's just no barrier. It really doesn't exist. If you just do the thing you wanted to do and you keep showing real progress, I think um, things are going to fall into place. They're always hard. Um, they're not even, it's very rarely that they're not hard. Um, but that's kind of the point. So yeah, if you, if you really love it and you really enjoy it, just go do it and everything else will come. Yeah, very well said. Well, Eric, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Congratulations on all your success and of course for being selected to the Enterprise Tech 30 list. Uh, you're, you're at a very uh, exciting point in your life cycle, especially in this space. So we're excited to watch your continued scale and growth. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be uh, on It's kind of surreal um, to, <laughs> I just used to sitting in my room and coding and now we're like out there in the world. Um, so uh, thank you.